Welcome back to the City Current Radio Show. I'm your host, Jeremy Park. We're honored to be joined by our next guest with Catholic Charities of West Tennessee. He's the Executive Director, Kelly Henderson. How are you doing, Kelly? I'm doing well, Jeremy. So let's dive in. Catholic Charities of West Tennessee doing amazing work here in our community. We'll talk a lot about the response to COVID-19 as well. But give us a little bit of a history lesson for Catholic Charities of West Tennessee. So Catholic Charities has been serving uh, the entire western side of Tennessee for the past 50 years. Our primary focus is working on the food insecurity challenges that many of our families face. They're going hungry, working with people experiencing homelessness, and also equipping the next generation so that we can actually break the cycle of poverty. And so for the last five decades, we've been focused on doing that. And we really try to mobilize the entire community uh, and many of the, our, our faith-based partners, uh, churches across the entire 21 county area that we serve are our core volunteer base. And so four main programs, talk about those and then we'll dive into each one of them separate. Absolutely. So our largest program by the number of people we serve is food. And so we are really working to address food insecurity in Tennessee. One in six people are food insecure in this community. And if you actually look into families with children, you'll find that that number is as high as one in four in certain areas. So uh, addressing food insecurity is a first step toward working with a family to uh, take them from a path of struggling with poverty to becoming self-sufficient. So food is by far the largest thing that we do. We also provide clothing resources for families uh, that are in need, whether you're a person experiencing homelessness without stable housing or perhaps you're a family that's just trying to figure out how they're gonna to afford to back to school clothes for their kids, or they're a rapidly growing family when their kids are going out of their clothes, uh, we provide those clothing resources to families free of charge uh, throughout the community. And thousands of people take advantage of that. We also work with people experiencing homelessness, whether you're an individual or you're a family. Uh, if you find yourself without a place to stay, Catholic Charities is one uh, option within the town uh, through the greater Memphis area where we can help you to find a permanent place to stay. We negotiate a lease on your in your name on your behalf with local landlords and try to move you in and provide rental assistance until you're back on your feet. And then lastly, we never can break the cycle of poverty without focusing on the next generation. So we provide enrichment opportunities, particularly during the summer to address uh, literacy gaps, both in reading and math with uh, K through five and working in, in neighborhoods that are disproportionately impacted by poverty and trying to work toward get these kids uh, so that they can uh, be empowered to break the cycle of poverty. When you talk about the effect on the community with COVID-19, so many of the things that you do are so essential for making sure that families and individuals have the ability to literally feed themselves, take care of themselves, their children, Talk about the pivots and what you've been able to do in response to COVID-19. So COVID, as we all know, has, um, has changed our entire way of life. And Catholic Charities uh, made an early decision in March when uh, the Safer at Home order was issued to uh, radically modify our program delivery. And so we have operated his, historically food pantries and clothing closets where people would have to come indoors to receive resources. We flipped our food pantry out into a drive-through only model. So it's, uh, we were one of the first no contact drive-throughs in town, which now has become the new norm with many of the fast food outlets. Uh, we created a no contact option for people to get food boxes. And so since March, uh, we've fed 11,000 people through our drive-through. Uh, and that's almost a double to the volume over the same period last year. So that's our biggest innovation. Um, beyond that, we actually took our historic summer camp where kids would come to a destination to receive summer learning uh, and turn that into camp in a box. And so we're actually delivering the camp material at the home place. Uh, and that's giving us a unique opportunity to, to, uh, to empower the family to learn together, uh, which we hope is going to have some, some positive consequences as well. So Two major pivots, um, but we are really confident that it's uh, going to create some capacity for us to do more in the future. What's a lesson that you've learned having to innovate and pivot and go through? What's something that you've learned that you say, okay, we've learned this in this moment, but like you said, this will really help us grow moving forward. 
Well, in many industries, innovation is something that you plan for, but it's also something that you may be forced to uh, adapt and, and deal with, that disruptive innovation that happens. And so uh, our team has really been open-minded to look at, could this be a way for us to work more efficiently, uh, to deliver our programs in uh, other places where we can do it in a more cost-effective model? And so I think that is going to be a major sea change in the way that we approach serving in our community by finding ways to get the resources out into the community versus always having a destination where someone will come in for services. Talk about collaboration. I think this is another key element to what you do is you collaborate with other organizations. And I'm thinking United Way of the Mid-South, Driving the Dream, that's a huge piece of, of your portfolio and your service offering, but that's built around collaboration. So dive into that. You're exactly right. The power of partnership is something that is, is really creates a leveraging impact where you can actually have two plus two greater than four if you do it right. And our partnership with United Way through that Driving the Dream hub model, uh, we're one of six hubs in the metro, uh, metro Memphis area right now uh, where people were working to empower that families to grow and learn together and actually achieve their dreams. And so that's a key partnership. Uh, we have a significant partnership with the Mid-South Food Bank that allows us to be able to obtain food at a much lower cost than if we were to try to source it on our own. And then probably our largest partnership is with the community itself, working with thousands of volunteers who come together and donate their time to allow us to be able to do the amazing work that we do. And none of this happens unless we work together. What's something that you want everyone to know about Catholic Charities of West Tennessee that they might not know? Something that immediately comes to mind is the fact that um, what you do is literally for everyone of all faiths, all socioeconomic levels, um, all you know, different skin colors, everything. So, I mean, you're truly here to serve the community, not just the Catholic community. I think that's something that is important, but that, that's just what comes to my mind. What, what comes yeah. to your mind? No, I think that's a great point, and I, I, would, I would reiterate that as uh, our, our teaching, our social teaching, if you will, within, the, within our Catholic faith, uh, teaches uh, the basic human dignity of every human being. Uh, and so creating an opportunity for people to serve and give back and live their faith, uh, I like to say we have a dual mandate. We're here to serve the community in need, but we're also here to create opportunities for people of faith to come and serve. And you put those two populations together, wonderful things can happen. Uh, and I think that's the one thing I'd love for the community to know about Catholic Charities is we're a resource. Whether you're in need or you want to serve and you want to give back, um, this, we can be a place for you. For you as the executive director, what are some of the goals when you look at, obviously we're in a time of disruption for everyone, for every business, every nonprofit organization, school district, uh, government entity. Um, but when you look at looking out over the next few years, what are some of the goals and things that are important for you stepping in to, to create that momentum to achieve? That's a really important question, Jeremy. And I think to answer that completely, maybe we need to paint a picture for what a better tomorrow might look like for our community. Uh, there are many things that uh, are uh, structurally challenging within our community that we as an organization um, have to help and have to work for and we have to lean into that tomorrow whether we're talking about uh, income inequality whether we're talking about runaway rent prices whether we're talking about injustices that have lived that lived in our community through uh, racial injustice for decades um, how do we bring those conversations together how do we have a healthy dialogue that allows us to lean into lean into the future and I think one way to start is embracing uh, what we at Catholic Charities believe, and that is radical hospitality. We welcome the neighbor. We welcome everyone. Um, trying to really embrace the, uh, the, the hospitality that we're called to bring. If someone's hungry, let's provide them a meal, then have the conversation about why they're hungry. If someone is needing a place to stay, let's put a roof over their head. If someone just needs to talk, let's be present. Uh, and then they can work together to find out what that, um, that better tomorrow might look like. Um, so really that radical hospitality is what I'd love the community to know us for. I think that's also a good lesson when you talk about people asking, how do we make a difference to help those who are homeless or facing poverty? 
there is no silver bullet. And I think that's the part where you can't just go in and say, okay, well, we're going to do this without really sitting down and one, having a conversation and taking a more asset based approach with dignity and respect, but also two, really coming in and, and looking at the full picture. Right. Talk about it from your vantage point of the radical hospitality of some of the things that when you look at really moving the needle, how that's done as kind of a lesson learned that you've learned by doing this work for over 50 years, five decades, what's maybe one or two things that you've learned that really do help move that needle? You know, looking at a problem as complex as poverty, sometimes the solutions may be so daunting that it's easier just to sit back and say, wow, that's a big problem. Um, but we believe that one of the, the, the lasting things that Catholic Charities or any agency for that matter can bring is let's slow it down and let's make it smaller and let's look at those small things that we can do together today immediately that will have an incremental impact. Um, we can end hunger for a child by providing that child a meal. Now, what, what would it look like if we end hunger for that child for the entire summer, the entire year? Let's bring your friends, let's bring your families, let's bring your place of worship, your business to the table. Um, learning how to um, work together and do the small things uh, is really the secret, I think, to that. Um, the problems are big, but we don't have to solve it tomorrow. Um, let's solve it today with one step. Nice, great advice. How can we help? You mentioned volunteerism, being powered by volunteers, being a, a, a fabric of the community. So talk about the different ways we can help. Obviously financial contributions too, but uh, how can we help? Yes, well thank you for that. Financial contributions are always important. We rely on the philanthropy of our community. And Memphis is a very generous town. It's one of the most generous towns per capita um, in the entire country. So we're counting on that generosity. But volunteering can begin uh, today at home uh, by collecting a food drive. We've had volunteers that have done neighborhood food drives um, and then bringing those in in the back of a pickup truck. It could be making masks. We've got retirees that can't get out because of social isolation that are making masks for uh, people experiencing homelessness that come to us every day. Um, coming in and volunteering to make food boxes at one of our facilities, coming in to direct traffic in our drive through all of our volunteer opportunities, and I wanna mean all, all of our volunteer opportunities are available online on our website. It's actually ccwtn.org and click on volunteer and there's a calendar with every volunteer opportunity we have. You click on right there and you sign up and we'll, we will then be waiting for you to show up and work. It's going to be a great experience and we look forward to seeing you. What would your words of encouragement be for the community coming together, coming out stronger on the other side? You know, based on what you've seen, talk about hope and what that looks like moving forward. You know, hope is one of these things. Hope is one of these things that um, can easily get lost in the noise. Um, many of the uh, families and individuals we work with are facing just tremendous despair and disappointment in their life. And to be able to see a smiling face uh, when they walk in to receive a box of food or a learning kit for the summer or walking in to turn in a document to, that might be the last step they need before they move into their own apartment. Uh, hope begins with a conversation and it begins with whether you're working with Catholic Charity staff or a volunteer. And, and so being able to uh, provide that welcome and provide that moment to be able to say, it's gonna be okay, because we're gonna be here with you. We're gonna walk with you. We're not just here to do things to and for people. We're here to walk with people uh, so that they can move forward um, and to that better tomorrow. So I think that's the real essence of hope is uh, walking shoulder to shoulder, hand in hand. Of course, we can't hold hands these days. But we can walk next to each other six feet apart. But hopefully when things normalize, we will be able to hold hands again and connect, obviously, uh, personally, as well as the uh, spiritually and, and mentally and everything else that we're allowed to do, at least through Zoom and technology, like we're doing right now. So talk with Kelly Henderson, Executive Director, Catholic Charities of West Tennessee. Go ahead and wrap up. You mentioned the website before, but talk about website, social media, phone number. Um, where can we go to raise our hand, to find those volunteer opportunities, to donate, to be a part of all the good that you're doing? So our website is the best go-to resource for everything we do. It's ccwtn.org. Uh, we're on Facebook. We'd love for you to like us there. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram. 
We communicate weekly on all the activities that are going on uh, on each of those media platforms. Uh, and now we're on City Current. That's right. Exactly. Well, we're honored for everything you do. Kelly, thank you for you and your team, for all you do in the community, for coming on the show. We appreciate it. Thank you, Jeremy.